find out as the drafting phase has just begun and we're gonna head right into this to kick things off for our first best of five here at day number three. Let's begin to draft with Blacklist on the blue side, Fireflux Esports on the red side immediately. We're seeing the Fanny, the Joy being banned out for Blacklist and for Fireflux, Wan Wan, immediate priority. So if we look back at Onik, at the Onik game, Blacklist also really focused on the jungle heroes. We saw the Fanny ban. Now, of course, that was a little different because you're going up against Kyrie and you don't want to see the Kyrie Fanny. But still, I think game one, we're keeping it simple, possibly just trying to hammer into Tianzi's hero pool. But that does that mean, like you said, are they going to contest the Lilia here? Um, are they going to contest something like that and kind of see what Fireflux wants to do? Because yes, they are on first pick. Those are definitely choices, but the way MTB is going this time around, it looks like they're setting up for Nolan, especially now that we see it. Bad Gal Seth, right on it. Uh, there goes the Lilia. If this isn't the Nolan ban, that's what MTB wants to put on Sensui right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can definitely see that. I can definitely see the angle that Blacklist is coming from as well. But Game. even so, right, how oh, far are they going to push it? With the Nolan ban coming out from the side from MTB, it's understandable that TNT, it's hard to... <laughs> Target him out. We saw the last time it happened. He pulled off a Leomore, which is expected to be great in the later to mid stages of the game. You give him enough of the lead, it's already over. He went on the Fire Flocks Express. And I think that's something Blacklist learned from. Not that the hero is the one that's specific, that's unique. It's the execution. So if they can answer that tit for tat against Fire Flocks uh, Esports, then they're fine. Open picks here. The Valentina, all right, they're covering their bases. Uh, I think they're allowing Fireflux to pick up certain heroes, and yeah, no, the, the Bruno solid, but what is it going to combo with? Bruno with... Bruno Baksha, Bruno Baksha solid. Bruno Baksha, no. no. The Rizzler. The Riz! Ooh. So they're going to give it over. So they Bruno now. Black has to Bruno here. Ooh. Yeah, Matilda's still open too. Dropping hearts, taking pants. I mean, so far, I think it's just really flexible for the side. For Fireflux at the very least, right? I, I like the Valentina opener for the side of Blacklist and International. But now, they're pairing it up with the Fredrin. Oh. And now, come on, the Matilda. Yes, there we go. Matilda, as well as the Fredrin. I'm seeing the standard Blacklist International. Yep, both teams not even focusing ADCs exactly right. Like, not even focusing on the damage. Letting the Bruno slide through unless Fireflux decides to get that now. But they're kind of building that core right now, right? Making sure that they're set. Because in the end, we know both gold laners can dig deep. We've seen a lot of players dig deep, but Fireflux, no, we're not going to let this go another round. We're going to pick that up. Maybe Fireflux is the one that's a little more reliant on Sunshine because they know that TNZ might actually change his pace. You can go fast as a Baksha, but it's not the same as uh, those assassins that actually burst down that can snowball. Baksha is far from the definition of a snowball hero, if you know what I'm saying. So here now, going into the second phase, Fireflux will definitely choke down onto what Oheb can play. I'd say they might even ban a Brody here after this first ban on the Claude. I think it's not a bad idea, but also I think, you know, at least for MTB, he's kind of set things up, right? Especially when you have a Fredrin, and, and especially when you have something like the Matilda, the immobile style of gold laners are now on the table, right? Things like the Ixia is possible. And let's not forget, we haven't seen a guiding win for Uber Barrage just yet. The Your entire tournament, oh, Blacklist International. <laughs> get rid of it, get rid of it. Take out that Tigreal. I like it. I mean, because that's something you want to stop Firefox from doing. You don't want to let them have the opportunity for those big wombo combos. We know how good Apex 47 did on the Tigreal. I mean, it, like you said, Leo, everyone's been doing good on the Tigreal lately. So I think it's a very solid ban on their part. And what you said as well, Definitely digging Oheb's hero pool because Oheb is definitely a key point right now, especially against uh, it was Oheb CW all day in the Onic Blacklist game. So if we can try to limit Oheb, strangle him down a little bit, it's a big advantage for Fireflux. Oheb's on a whole nother level now. M5 Oheb is so different from any of the Ohebs that even won championships in the past. So I'd say he's okay with playing a losing lane, a weak lane suffers. as we like to call it, Your and even moves. with the uh, approach of both these coaches right now, which is definitely off kilter. This is not the way they would have drafted in the group stages. So already we're onto a different approach. Interestingly enough, they're allowing the Brody to come through. The Benedetta taken out by Coach Ooh. Bad Gal Sef. Something tells me here, they're open to the uh, possibility of the Teresa not going to the lane we think it's going to. Mm. We've seen it in the, the win of the group stage. No, <laughs> maybe. I, uh, I think it might. Uh, it's always it be a flexible. Good idea? It's always possible. 
not. It's it's it's, it's out there. It, there is a uh, there is a president. There is a president for sure. And now we go over to the red side's first play. It's up to Fireflux. What they're going to uh, what they're going to show, right? Are they looking for that counter pick? Uh, that counter pick support at the very very end, or are they going to reveal who their mid laner is going to be? Because as soon as they reveal who their mid laner is going to be, that kind of affects how the EXP matchup is going to go. And you think that at least for Fireflux, banning out the Benedetta, at least you don't have the Swiss Army yeah. knife, right? I think as long as, I think their goal right now is to pick up a jungler, right? Or no, they already have the Basha. Yep. So, pick up, pick up a Roamer? Whatever this pick is will dictate where the Terizla goes. I mm -hmm. checked in on the last time that they did that mid lane Terizla. It's a very specific build. They needed an Angela. They needed a Lapu Lapu. So, this this pick right here, four, for Fireflux will dictate it. All right. I am the power good, of oh, the good choice. Good choice. At least now, with... Uh, with the Kaja, Blacklist can't necessarily walk up and disrespect them, right? Yeah. They can look for the big punish. And better yet, it still begs the question who exactly is going into the EXP lane. It doesn't compromise it just yet. But I think this confirms it. Uh, if you do put the Terizla in mid here, there's not enough magic damage. There's not enough coverage mm -hmm. for Fireflux to get away with it. So what you do here is, if you're Blacklist, if it indeed is a mid lane Terizla, you build a Dreadnought armor, you build a pair of pants, Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. Bob's your uncle. You're fine. That's his actual name. <laughs> bar for bar. Bob is my uncle. What do you mean? <laughs> his full name's Robert, though, but, you know, we go way back. Looking at Blacklist this time around, what's Oheb going to be playing? There's the carry, shredding through the big T and the big B on the other side. And, of course, an old favorite going to the XP lane. There's Agent Zero's Edith, able to catch even the most agile of Fanny's midair. Hmm. This one's interesting. It feels like at least for the side of Blacklist International, let's start off a little slow here, right? Let's test the waters a little bit. This doesn't look like a lineup that can necessarily go hyper, hyper aggressive, but at the very least, there's some clear key points that they want to fill. They want to make sure that the laners have a good time. If it's smothering, that's totally okay, but more so, Oheb needs to walk out of there alive, zero deaths. Okay, first time pick. Lunox is going to get locked in. It shreds, I mean, it's... It's reasonable, right? Mm -hmm. You can brilliance out. You have some defensive there. Something to maybe shred down the uh, the Fredrin. The Edith. The Edith. If she tries to get set up. I mean, yep. there's definitely some possibility for it. And it also can be, yes, it has late game shred, but it can also bring some early game aggression. I've seen it on plenty of mid laners. So it could fit Rose's play style very well. Break this down for me, Leo. What are we expecting for this upcoming game? When it comes down to damage, Fireflux Impunity has it in spades. And they have damage coverage. Uh, that's something that I was uh, noting prior to this Lunox pickup. But now looking at the HP based damage that they can deal. Forget about it. Edward, since Sui, they have to choose their engagements. As for Blacklist, I have to agree with you, uh, gentlemen, uh, my bespectacled buddies. Uh, the fact that both of these lineups have a clear path forward, I give an advantage to Blacklist because they've done this several times. They are masters of choosing their pace and slowing it down up until their cores are ready. And when I say cores, I'm not just looking at Carrie, I'm not just looking at Oheb, even Yue. You can expect Yue to start... Yeah, yeah, whatever that is, that, 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 that second skill on Valentina, that's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot as we get into our very first game in this best of five to kick things off. It's Blacklist International on the blue side up against Fireflux Esports on the red side. All right, looks like they're already being a little bit aggressive. Rene J uh -oh. might get caught off here a little bit too deep. Can they catch him? Alien gonna yeah. try to come help out. There it One, is. Two. Oh. He dodges, but no. Apex still picks up the kill. Oh, well, at least while all of this is happening, Edward, well, I can't say it was much of a win. He got a bit of gold off the plating and made sure that at least two of the minions were gone. So it's going to be a little slow for Alien to actually scale up in this late matchup. All right, to be fair, it was the hitman who was crossing the river. He did try to check for a uh, sneaky orange to see what's up. Oh, is this okay? And <laughs> apparently, Fireflux was all the more sure to protect the NZ, and they came in with punitive justice. Now, looking at uh, how else we can uh, bounce back from this, uh, if you're Fireflux, you just go as fast, and, and luckily you are faster on the rotation. Again, the, the Frederin doesn't walk as quickly as the Bach can roll out, but for a Blacklist though, the fact that that kind of action happened in the XP lane means Oheb is still on schedule. Okay. At the very least, he's pulling attention away from one of the bigger win cons here as we start looking at what they're bringing to the table. I'm seeing, okay, CDR. I'm seeing a great weight building as blessing as well. All right. Looks pretty good. 
little bit of damage on a TMZ. Nothing super crazy going to happen here. We still have about 10 seconds for the turtle, and neither teams want to blow their load just yet. Mm -mm. They gotta hold on. They gotta hold on. They gotta wait for that climactic moment at the very end. But it's still, we do need a little bit of time, right? Because so far, the fact that we do see that Apex 47 was able to take the kill, it's not like a majority of the goal fell into the right hands anyways, right? Yep. But it does push him closer to four. Ooh. Yep. Edward taking the express over to Tienzi there. Oh. They're gonna try to zone away Yue there as well. I'm excited to see how Rosa plays out on this Lunox. Hitting a little four, there goes the penalty zone. Rosa gonna dash in as well. Sets we able to take the turtle though. Alien, causing a little bit of damage. Ryan J, gonna knock them all up, but they should be able to disengage here. Blacklist, gonna escape with a win there. All right, so uh, they are sending out Oheb to go hit double lanes. Uh, usually you see a Claude doing this because again, he has the agility, he has the battlefield mobility, but here, it's more of a build of, uh, it's a slow build for the carry. He knows that he can't win against the uh, Bruno because you're winning range, you're winning dueling uh, as a Bruno on Sunshine. So, safe to say, Blacks International, specifically Oheb, is looking for his breaks every now and then. So far, Renegade's job right now is to just draw a line between Fireflox and his cores. Fireflox and Oheb and Yue. So as long as you and Oheb aren't dying, Fireflox uh, have to pick up the pace, have to force something from Black. Which, I mean, so far, like, considering the motions across the map and the early items that we are seeing, right, it's only a very slight lead coming in from the side of Sensui, but it's an important lead to have over TNZ, because the last time they met, he could barely walk up to contest, and now things are a little different. Now you have two spearheads instead of just waiting to scale for one. Look at the rotations from Sunshine as well. He's, like, ready. He thinks, if a fight's going to happen, I want to be somewhere close to the mid lane. Now, this could cost him a little bit. It's going to put some pressure onto his lane, but now Sensui... In the midst of two, should be able to get away from this. Renny J there as well, going to be able to guide him to safety. Yep, pulls him out. Uh, something to note about Sunshine now, rotating out as just as much as uh, Oheb. The reason why Oheb can do this is because they have a Matilda. Mm. They have the Guiding Wind, so it, it's less of a travel for uh, the carry. And look, you see that? It's a game of inches for Blacklist. For Fireflux, it's full committal. This Kaj is very much offensively uh, orientated while the Matilda can do both. Yep, he's farming double lanes here, and he's not losing a single one, usually for teams without a Matilda, or at the very least having Wilderness Blessing, right? You do end up losing maybe one, sometimes two, depending on the management overall, and that's a very small loss if you're taking two waves, but if you're maximizing making zero loss, it's just all profit! Alright, Turtle Dose coming up right now. Renny J, gonna get that Circling Eagle on Apex 47. Edward trying to keep Alien at bay as well. TNZ charging up, rolling against the wall. I like the pacing. Black also not going to try to rush this though. Oh, oh yeah. winning in the bot lane. 1v1. That's going to be bad for Sunshine. Now Fireflux know they need to claim something here. They've lost something down in the gold lane. There goes the penalty zone. Tienzi able to take the turtle. Terrify on it. It picks 47. Renny J wants to keep. Wants to keep his eyes on him. Tienzi on the run. Rosa doing a little bit of damage. Apex 47 is trying to get out alive, but he's going to get pulled back with his own skill. And that is a kill for the Hitman. Beautiful stuff coming in from Blacklist International, right? We saw the punishes that they were looking for. Unfortunately, didn't get the turtle, but a solo kill down by the gold lane has their win con already activated at this point. I wish I saw the intricacies, the nitty gritty of what happened down bottom. Uh, to have been a fly on that wall, but just the same, it's Oheb you're talking about here. He's able to make apple juice out of lemons, right? When life gives you lemons. But this might be the story right here. Maybe before the kill, he was 300, 400 ahead. But now, oh dear lord, he has the corrosion scythe on his way to a DHS and even bought boots and a casual jerkin, why not? That might make the difference here. I think the jerkin may have been there when he won the 1v1. Mm -hmm. That may have made a difference and again, allowed for him to forward flicker. That's something I know as well. Uh. Rosa Force use the brilliance there. Ooh. We're seeing that pressure be applied to Fireflux. The same pressure that Fireflux applied to them last time. This time, Blacklist bringing the aggression. Apex right now is forced to stay in the gold lane. He's forced to protect Sunshine. And still, Blacklist are looking for some action down there. Yeah, as a Kaja, there's very little protecting you can do. You, your kit isn't built to protect. While the Matilda, on the other hand, which may have actually added up to why Oheb eventually got the uh, lead onto Sunshine. Oh, oh. The stun. Apex able to dash away. Oheb with the speedy light wheel just unloading. But wait, the backup's here. The hitman ready to strike with the guiding eagle. The circling eagle. Oheb takes tower. Fireflux 
just wants to try to get them away from them. Blacklist got what they came for. I'm telling you, Blacklist, they're trying to pour gasoline on a very, very small fire. And for now, it might not be enough because Firefox, they want to take it slow. Everybody's going, oh! Hey, hey, hey. I don't know if he wanted to start that, though. Rosa is going to dash in, though. With a little bit of damage on Oheb. Edward, okay, ready to back up and re-engage. Fireflux. I don't know if they want to take those fights right now. Oh, you see the release control, the discipline in Agent Zero. He could have flickered on forward, spent a bit of his kit, confirmed the kill, but no, they know he, he, he knows his team needs his uh, CC flicker just to secure this turtle. All right, Renny J locking on to Rosa there. Dianzi able to come in, Apex 47 takes a turtle, but he is going to get suppressed. Wait a second, Rosa in a little bit of trouble as well. Rosa gonna get pulled back in. Apex 47 knocked up, taken down. Rosa might be next on the chopping block. Sent to be able to get the taunt. The brilliance comes out. Now Fireflux on the run. They gotta get out of town. Blacklist leading the game right now. Oh, from what looked like a great play coming in for Apex 47, lucky that he got it. Rosa ends up losing his flicker, and that's not something that you want to see, right? Again, you can definitely see the idea of what the play was supposed to be, but unfortunately, that's just a big battle spell gone for the next neutral. And so far, Blacklist International will keep up with the pace. Luckily, a minute and a half is when the Lord comes up, so Rosa should be ready. But the question is, is Rosa ready? That's just the call. That's the Clock of Destiny. Uh, on their way to uh, a Durant, if I'm not mistaken. It should be fine. A uh, Durant or a Genius Wand. Mm -hmm. One or the other. I think it, it, it's not there yet. I'd like, to, I'd like to say they're fine in the sense that if they don't fight. But if Blacklist pick it up, and again, that small fire pouring fuel upon fuel, gallon on gallon, it should speed up to the point where when this first Lord comes up, it should be all black. I mean, let's see whether or not it's going to... It's Edward, he's going to face check this. I think he's going to be totally fine here, right? I don't think Fireflux Esports really want to commit too many resources onto Edward unless they're concerned about his primal wrath. But half the time, half the time that they are on this side of the map, they are usually the ones getting pushed out. But notice, bottom side, right? The tier 2 is under threat as the mid lane gets cleared up. Yeah. They got it. Traded up for top lane tier 1. Good trade for Blacklist there. 2.6k gold lead now. A lot of, you, you see it all the time with the top teams. They're willing to bring the fight even when they are at a deficit. And I think this is a point where Fireflux is going to start hitting some of those spikes. Sunshine just got in the Berserker's Fury. We were talking about some of Rose's build actually out golding UA right now. So is Fireflux going to still try to bring that with, Tur with Lord coming up? If they are, this is the time to do it. Now, something tells me uh, they can't afford to do that because long lane has been severely damaged. Yeah. Uh, if, if, I, if I read the situation correctly, that oh. last minion actually popped the holy shield. Pre-12 minutes, uh, turrets have shields, it's already popped. So they have to deal with that uh, lane the old-fashioned way, and now... Oh, oh, nice flicker on a four members, but he gets knocked up in return. Alien getting low, but since we get the time. Oh, Brock, knock him down, Tianzi's getting shredded. Oheb just taking him down and takes the flight, zooming over just to find Alien as well. They're gonna move on to the Lord now, and Fireflux back back into their corner. That's what you like to see. If you are indecisive, do I start recalling? Do I walk away from this? Is this a good or is this a bad situation? Blacklist will collapse on you. And that's what we saw with Alien after TNZ ends up dying. He didn't know. Should I go back in? I could heal off of the wave, but at the same time, I could lose my life. And Blacklist, eh, I'm just flickering for this. In the business of what we call the turn, Blacks International feigned the Lord take. Fireflux Esports bit down on the bait. Alien went in with the OPZ. It was an offensive penalty zone. Our good friend here, Mr. Wagner, just lost it like, whoa! And I would have too. But the thing is, it was all Blacklist's plan. They knew what was up, and that's why Rosa flickered on out. Rosa, uh, rather, ulted out because this is not a situation I want to be in. I'm saving my ult up. I'm actually building my items so that it's worth it when I do do my own little version, the Rosa DD. And now with the Genius Wand, maybe they need one more. Rosa needs one more item for it to actually matter. Yeah, she, Rosa also needs to find the angle. We saw Edward already pick up the uh, the shield. I, I'm having a total mind blank right now. The, the, the Athena's the shield. Shield. Yeah, yeah. shield. The shield of Athena. So, the shield of Athena, exactly. Athena's personal shield. Right. Um, so Rosa picks. Rosa can't damage him right now, and he can't find an angle onto Oheb. Oheb's just tight inside of that little box. He knows exactly when he needs to pop the speedy light wheel. He knows exactly when he needs to engage, and Rosa just has no way in. <laughs> Norway, Norway out. Given uh -oh. the hitman, they have a way out. 
Yeah, it's very much all in, right? You're looking for the small synergies of Apex 47 and Rosa kind of working together, but at the same time, let's not forget about the high ground defense that Fireflux actually have, right? Especially when it comes down to chunking down Lords. It, at this stage of the game, Rosa, he's looking over at Sunshine, he's like, don't worry, I got this. Yeah, and I think uh, when you're down like this, about 5k at about 12 minutes with an item build that I'd say rivals your lane mate, again, Save for the Sensui and Tianzi situation, that's a huge gap. Uh, you're fine. Fireflux from Esports, the kind of lineup that they have, especially when you're looking at the high ground defense, this is what I would like to call a low committal wave clearing lineup. Uh, you have dudes like the Bruno that can actually just basic attack and most minions take just two hits tops, given your full build. You also have the Lunox, which is just able to like you know, spend their kit, able to clear wave after wave, even a Lord if you want to underneath your base. So it's fine. Fireflux have that going for them. Now, their main weakness, especially if Blacklist do crack into an inhibitor or two, is they're going to be trapped inside their own base. And now what does this lineup from Fireflux Sports have that works inside the base? Actually, to be fair, very little. It's just the penalty zone. You still want to play in bushes. You still want to find angles so that Apex 47's kit and approach actually becomes important it becomes an x factor because if you see the kaja coming then all the more especially if you're blacklist you can just pull him out with the guiding winds exactly and i think that's why it's just the characteristics of both the compositions we're expecting fireflux to eventually scale up but in terms of the engagement they only really have two big options and blacklist international are just going to continue they're great at team fighting right getting in and out of it and especially since none of them have taken purifies they were straight up flickers they're looking to punish mistakes such as being out of position engaging too hard being too far forward compared to maintaining some good battle lines between your front and back. All right. So it looks like they're going to hang out in that bot lane right now. Maybe try to clear things up, give up this Lord, but at least they know, like, if we can survive this Lord push and we try to get a little more macro on the map, we can try to win for the long haul. And I think that's what the Turkish said. You know, we, we have okay defense. We're fine. It, it's very low committal. Costs us very... Uh, few resources to actually do this. Something to note as well, the reason why they didn't even think of contesting, uh, the reason why they, they said, you know, we'll just take it in the base, this is just Lord number two anyways, is they have low vision. This lineup needs Apex to actually move between bushes and, again, maybe even sacrifice themselves just so that Sunshine and Rosa know where to go. Even TNZ, even for TNZ, it's not as easy. Nah, they, they can't do that, right? Because again, if they send TNZ in there, they don't have the retribution. If they send their Kaja in there, they're not going to have that divine judgment for the pick. So you can see why Fireflux just would rather turtle. Okay, sacrifice bot inhibitor, totally fine. We can deal with this, but let's fight now. All right, Lord has broken through, but Blacklist wants to stay around the mid side. Oh, Apex 47 instantly shattered. Sent to the nether realm there. Blacklist. Breaking down all inhibitors. Luckily, Sunshine is able to take rid of the, get rid of the Lord there. Sansu, he's trying to hold the front side. Takes down Alien. Oh, have picks oh, up the kill, no. though. Rosa, going to be next. Pops out the Brilliance. Able to just get away. But Yue doesn't want to let it happen. Into the backside. And now TNZ against the ropes as well. Blacklist going to clean up in game number one. GG, well played. That's game number one. Falling into the hands of Blacklist International. And my god, Yue taking that penalty zone to jump at Rosa, I'm telling you, that almost looked personal. Already, Blacklist to a great start. Their first game win.